Hey everybody, um, we're back. We're gonna do another video. Here we're gonna talk about exponential functions. This is uh, chapter five. Um, in our class, we're only gonna do sections 5.3 and 5.4 from this chapter. So um, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel probably. I uh, hope everyone's staying safe and um, secure at home and is learning a lot. Um, from these videos. Okay, let's get going. So, exponential functions and models. What is an exponential function? Well, let's think about a motivating example here. Um, so, for instance, uh, under ideal con conditions, um, an E. coli bacteria uh, divide every 20 minutes. So that means their population doubles every 20 minutes. Um, of course, this is, isn't necessarily true all the time. This is under ideal conditions, right? So then if we assume that uh, w when we start our study, um, there are 100 e, e. coli in the Petri dish uh, at the outset. our study there are 100 e coli uh, in the population okay so the first question is how many will there be after four hours Okay, and then um, second thing that we want to know is uh, how long oops, how long will it take for the population to reach 1.6 billion? So 1.6 billion uh, bacteria. So it turns out that this um, process of, well, in this case, doubling every certain amount of time, um, that is exactly determined by what's called an exponential function. Okay, so we're going to model this, uh, this using an exponential function, and we'll see how it works out. So let's check it out. So in part A, right, we, we are just trying to find a function that models the data and then evaluate it at a certain time. So here X is going to be in minutes, and Y is this number of bacteria. So at the outset, there are 100 bacteria. And in 20 minutes, there's 200 because it's doubled. Uh, another 20 minutes, it's doubled again to 400. You see this is gonna go up kind of quickly, 860 minutes, uh, 80 minutes, it's at 1600, and so on and so forth, okay? So we wanna figure out what is the um, function that models this. Well, look, the to go from here to here, we multiply by two. To go from here to here, we also multiply by two. 
this is not a constant average rate of change, right? <coughs> the average rate of change from here to here is um, 100 over 20. But over here, it's 200 over 20. Then it's 400 over, over 20, and so on and so forth. So the average rate of change is, is increasing as well. But you can see that every time we double, we're multiplying by 2. Um, for this set amount of difference in x value. That's going to be our um, prototypical uh, exponential function model. Um, so in this case, our function is going to be population of x, where x is in minutes, is 100 times 2 to the power of x over 20. Okay, this is because every multiple of 20 that x is, we get another multiple of 2 times 100, right? So after one step, we do x is 20, then 2 to the 20 over 20 is 2 to the 1x times sorry, 100 times 2 is 200. Then two steps away, which is 40 minutes, is going to make this 40. That makes 40 over 20 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4 times 100 is 400, and so on and so forth. Okay? Um, so in general, an exponential function is uh, of this type. So an exponential function is of the form f of x equals some number called the coefficient times a, where a is a number greater than 0 but not equal to 1, to the x power. Uh, this is similar in that, um, but I've changed it up a little bit so that it, it looks more obvious to see what it is. But we could write this in this form as well using just a different a. But that's the general format for an exponential function, okay? So not all exponential functions will be written exactly in this way right now, or but you can change it to that uh, if it's exponential. So let me say here, a cannot be zero and needs, sorry, it needs to be greater than zero, but not one. So we don't do negative values for the base of the exponential. Okay, so now we need to figure out what is P of four hours. Well, four hours is 240 minutes. So we need to evaluate 100 times 2 to the power of 240 divided by 20, this must be 4, okay, if we look at our calculator, we can do that, so the way we do it is go 100 times 2, and then the caret means to the power of 240 divided by 20, and let's see, what do we get, some huge number. 409,600. Organisms. <clears throat> now, part B, we actually have to solve something. Okay, so part B, um, we need to solve for X, right? So 1.6 billion is 1.6 times 10 to the 9 power. That's in scientific notation. 
we need to see when is this equal to 100 times 2 to the x over 20. And in um, section 5.4, we're going to see how to find the exact answer to this uh, using what are called logarithms. Logarithms are, are uh, the inverse operation, or inverse function of exponential functions. So we see actually this one would come out to be um, 20 times the logarithm with base 2 of uh, 1.6 billion. Okay. And we see that that comes out to be about 332 minutes, which is five and a half hours, roughly. Okay. So how do we solve that, though, in this section? We would need to use our calculator. So Here's one way to do that with the calculator. So we take y equals, just like solving any equation, okay? We take, if we don't know how to do it out on the outset, we graph both sides. So 1.6 second ee, or times 10 to the, times 10 to the power of 9, and then put 100 times 2 to the power of, and put parentheses around your uh, exponent if necessary. Okay, I know what the answer is supposed to be, so I need to change my viewing window a little bit. Um, we need to go from, say, I don't know, 0 to 400 minutes, say by 50s. And we know the y value is going to be 1.6 billion. So let's go from um, 0 to, I don't know, 2 billion by uh, 1 billions. Yeah, 1 billions. Okay, let's look at the graph. There's one thing, nothing seems to be happening. Oop. Oh, did I make a mistake? Where's the answer? Oh, maybe we're wrong. Let's see. What's this? What's the answer supposed to be? Uh, this is good. So we've. Caught a mistake, perhaps. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let me make sure I did this right. The x over 20, uh -huh. 1.6 billion, okay. Look at the graph, we second trace. We're gonna find the intersection. First curve, am I on the first curve? Yes. Am I on the second curve? Yes. Uh, am I about there? Sure. The answer is more like 479 minutes. Oh, okay. So 479 minutes. I must have made a mistake in my notes here. Um, that is how many hours? It's about eight hours. So 479 minutes or eight hours. Let's check. Let's change that. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I solved this right. Um, oh, yes, so this is supposed to be I'm saying the eighth power. That's not, yeah, I made a mistake on this one. Okay, so should be right, let's see. Six divided by hundred, no, one seven. Seven hundred. Divide by hundred, yeah. Okay. That and then our base two. Okay. 
So this turns out to be, what did I say? Um, 700, uh, It's always good to check your work, right? 479 minutes is about eight hours. Okay. So let me make sure. All right. So we checked our answer. This is, I think this is right. So let's, Let's check to see that it actually solves the problem, okay? Um, we can do that with our calculator again. So if we take 100 times 2 to the power of 479 minutes divided by 20 minutes, that's all the exponent. We should get 1.6 billion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, 1.26 uh, 1 billion. Okay, good. All right. So everyone makes mistakes. Anyway, in section five of four, you'll be able to find the exact answer here, which I had the wrong answer. Um, but now I've got the right one. Okay. Number one, number one. Moving on. So let me uh, formally write down what the definition of an exponential function is. An exponential function with base A. where a is a positive number that's not equal to 1. You have to have that. Um, is of the form base is another. Some of the form f of x equals c times a to the x. Here, a is the, called the base, as I said, and c is called the coefficient. But <coughs> from properties of expo exponents, we find out that c is actually the y-intercept of the function. Okay. Um, and so you might want to know what the difference is between A uh, linear function and exponential functions. And we're going to do this in the case of where we talk about how the y values grow as the x values grow. So let's assume we've got a linear function uh, with a positive slope, right? How does that look? when compared to an exponential function where the base is bigger than one, okay? So on the one hand, linear function looks like, like this, right? So y equals mx plus b, it looks like that straight line. But an exponential function, it's gonna look different. It's gonna look like that. In fact, it goes a little bit steeper than that um, if you uh, really pay attention. This becomes what's called a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so it's a horizontal line that the graph gets really, really close to but doesn't cross. Okay, this one goes up and up forever, right? So here we have y equals mx plus b, the m is the average rate of change. It stays the same, right? Here, this is different. In the case when a is 1, the graph looks like that. It goes up really fast. Okay, so 
uh, one example of this would be um, like if we had x and y here we start out with a hundred then it goes to 200 no whoops uh, sorry let me go to the next page I don't have enough space so like linear we get stuff like so say every 20 minutes we go up by 100 so <coughs> so from 100 to 200 then 200 to 300 then 300 to 400 and so on until we get to was it 1200 if we did all the way to 240 okay so here in linear growth right if the x values increase by the same amount each time the y values are going to increase by adding the same amount right same rise each time over the same run so i'm adding okay but what we saw before was exponential growth their stuff doubled, right? So I'm not adding by the same number each time. I'm actually multiplying. And what you see is at first, okay, the difference might not be that much, or, well, it could even be slower. Um, the exponential growth might even be slower uh, at first. Um, or in the very for short term, but eventually the uh, exponential growth y values will overtake any any linear growth. So each time I'm here, I'm multiplying by two. So I don't get twelve hundred. What am I doing? Four hundred something thousand, right? Four hundred nine thousand. Four hundred and nine thousand six hundred. Okay, so this is exponential growth. Um, and as you can see, right, if I were to graph these things on the same line, note that at some point, you know, at the very short term, maybe um, the exponential function is going to be underneath the linear function. So the linear growth might be faster in the short term, but eventually this uh, exponential growth will always overtake exponential uh, linear growth, okay? So you're asking, so what? Well, um, some of your homework problems will be like this. So for example, uh, say we would need to find a linear function or an exponential function uh, that models the data exactly. Okay, so this data is going to be exactly linear or exactly exponential, and we'll see sort of immediately which one's which, and I'll show you how to do it. So let's say x is negative 15, then negative 5, then 5, then 15, and then 25. So the x values are going up by 10 each time. 
the y values are going up by 2, 2 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Okay, so we have the y values are going up by adding 2 each time. So the average rate of change is going to be the same. It's going to be 10 over, or it's going to be 2 over 10 for all of them, right? So um, it's going to be linear. And you can find the answer by doing uh, linreg. Right, the linear regression, if you want, or uh, you have, you know it's linear, um, so you can just find the equation of the line that connects any two of those, and you'll get the right answer. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. Right, but linear regression um, is how you would do this one, that one. Here's an example where. Might not be able to tell right away, but here the x values go up by two each time. And then we go from five over nine to five to 45. You might be guessing now what it, this should be 405 and then 3,645. Okay. This is clearly exponential growth, right? So there we're going to use exp regression, exponent exponential regression. Okay? And there's one more example and I hope I can fit it here. Uh 0 1 Two, three, and five. Two thousand and twenty-five. Down to twenty. Down to point two. Down to point zero zero two. Down to two times ten to the negative seven. Okay. So each time um, this one is multiplying by some bit, right? So to go from here to here, you multiply by 9, it turns out. So from there to there, you multiply by 9. So that means exponential, where the, the base is going to be 9. Here, we're dividing, right? Dividing by 100 each time, OK? That's also going to be exponential, uh, an exponential function, but it's going to be exponential decay. That's what we say when the when the base is um, not greater than one. But we still find the answer using exponential regression. Okay, so let's get the answers. So you enter your data um, into your lists. Okay, so go to Stat, Edit, Clear Out Old Data. Okay, so linear uh, regression. We know it. It um, this data is exactly linear, so we really only need to put in two data points. I'm going to do that to save time. <coughs> so the first two data points were this. Then I go to stat <coughs> calc uh, number four, excuse me. And that gives me the linear regression curve of best fit. So 0.2x plus 25. So, but I knew it was 0.2, right? Because that's the rise over run. Anyway. 
y equals 0.2x plus 25. That's the solution for that one. Using linear regression, okay? Exponential regression. How do we do how do we do that? Well, let's do it for the first one here. So I'm gonna clear out old data. And I'm going to put the first couple of values here, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, then 5 over 9, 5, 45, 405. 36, 45, I hope that's the right one. So then I go to stat, calc, and instead of doing one of the ones we've done before, we go down to the number zero. Now, oh, yes, and little r is one, so little r comes back again. If little r is one, that means um, we've got that all the data points, uh, or that this, function that passed through all the data points. Okay, so was it five times three to the x? Okay, notice that um, before I said the base was gonna be nine, that, that was uh, ill-advised because here, the x values go up by 2, right? So really, each time, the base is what happens when we go up by x equals 1. So that's like taking 9 or 3 squared, right? So each, every two steps, we do times 3 twice. So that's why I got the base that I did when I did um, exponential regression. All right, last one here. That edit. Uh, do zero, one, oops, two, three, five, then two thousand twenty point two. That's probably more than I need right now. Point one, two, three, four, five, six, two. Two times ten to the negative seven, okay. Stat calc zero exponential regression. And negative one here means that it goes through all the data points, but it's decay, right? So 2,000 is the coefficient, and 1 over 100 is the um, base. Two thousand, right? Because that's the y-intercept in this case, 0 0.01 to the x. All right. And uh, just so you know the difference, right? Here's what the graph of an exponential function looks like again. So we've got exponential growth. So the graph of an exponential function does basically something like that, okay? It's got a horizontal asymptote y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote and in this case this is um, y equals a to the x where in this case a is 
greater than one, and if it is, then we call it exponential growth. And so the function is increasing for all x, but the domain is all real numbers as well. The range is not all real numbers. The range is only positive numbers. Okay. On the other hand, if it's exponential decay, the graph is sort of flipped back. Oops. It's not the function. Got to pass the vertical line test. Okay. Uh, there we go. Does something like that. Okay. We still have a horizontal asymptote. Okay. Except now we see that the uh, A is between 0 and 1. In that case, we call it exponential decay. And now it's decreasing for all x. Uh, but the same is true as for the domain and range. Okay, so if y equals a to the x, but a is greater than 1, it, it's increasing. If it's between 0 and 1, it's decreasing. And so you see that um, these different things are going to model uh, different uh, different situations. So growth, a growth model uh, will do stuff like population of bacteria, right? Population growth of bacteria is one example that can be uh, modeled using exponential growth uh, function. Unfortunately, at the start of the epidemic, we see perhaps that COVID-19, the number of cases in some place, could be uh, construed as growing exponentially. That's really bad for us. We want to make sure that this stops, in, um, the growth rate stops being exponential. Um, if we can. Uh, another thing that we're going to see in our class is compounding interest is another um, real-life situation that's modeled with an exponential function with the uh, base being greater than 1. A decay model so radioactive material um, decays in the same way that a exponential uh, decay model um, goes. So you can use an uh, exponential function to exactly um, model radioactive uh, material as it decays from from a more um, radioactive substance into a, a less so. Or instead of compounding interest, you could come, uh, you could depreciate items uh, at a similar way as you would say interest bearing accounts like savings accounts versus what you know 